Yeah, so one day they uh, I, I parked in the parking lot and I opened the door and I just walked in. And I was. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have my time to shine. The door was open. The door was open. My time to shine. <laughs> like Danny. No, I, mean, I think, I think um, for me, it's always been the same sort of story. Girl, I, I, I've mentioned this on previous shows and previous podcasts that I've always been pushed by a lot of coaches to go play LaBear, whether it's in college, whether it's with national team. Even when I was trying to go or deciding where to go for pro, they're like, oh, maybe you should try to go play LaBear. But for me, LaBear just isn't that fun for me. Like for me, volleyball, hey. I always, I'm, I'm speaking for me. I'm not speaking for you, bro. Okay. For me, like yeah, I, the, I only, I only, <laughs> I only um, want to do something like when I enjoy it. I, if I'm not enjoying volleyball, especially playing overseas where I'm away from family and friends, ten months of the year, like I'm not gonna continue playing volleyball if I just hate it. I'm sure you two feel the exact same way, and that's the advice I give anybody if they want to go play at the next level. It's like you really have to enjoy it, whether you're gonna go play in college, or you're playing professionally or whatever. For me, setter is. The most I've played it my whole life. I trained, and going into the national team didn't. I mean, of course, like the first time I went was as a libero to come. Spra, John, Coach John Spra had uh, got a hold of me and let me know he just wanted to come see how I would do in the gym as libero. Came, trained. I mean, literally, I never. Wait, what year was this? I uh, this was in between my junior and senior year, so after my third year at Hawaii, and for me that was it was it was tough because i'm like yeah i want to be in the national team gym but i want to play like the position i pull i've trained for for like 15 16 years at that point it was center so for me it's so hard to say yes and like i feel like i'm selling myself short and even my dad like my dad has anybody i mean you've heard previous podcasts he's so tough on my brother and i from a volleyball standpoint and just um as uh as a father, like he demand, and but it's good. Like for my brother and I, we needed that because we were just kind of like wild and we needed discipline going up. And but he's always big on me. He's like, you never like sell yourself short. Like know your worth. No, like like he's he's the one that pushes me. Like I I would have ended up at UCLA as a libero if he was not my father and he was not directing me kind of where to go. And I I thank him to this day for being the one who's always pushing me. Like like bro, you need to go do what you love doing and what you've trained your entire life for doing. Don't like, just cause somebody says something doesn't mean that you have to go do what they, how, how they envision your career going. It's like your career, it's your life. You put in all the work, like you can't sell yourself short. So for me, I went for a little bit, uh, did some training and went back home that summer. I wasn't there for so long. Then after my senior year, I, Rob Nielsen, who's the, who was the assistant coach at the time, he hit me up kind of in the middle of our season, our senior year. We'd been having a really good year. Just let me know that they want to bring me in for the summer um, as a setter. He's like, I'm like, I, I wanted to make sure like that I'm coming as a setter. Because if I was going as libero, then I wasn't really interested because I was going to be signing a professional contract as a setter. And so for me, like I went as a setter. And even like that year after my senior year at Hawaii, like it was cool. Like I was only setting, but I uh, was mainly with kind of the developmental team the whole summer training and so for me that's kind of the extent of what I've done with the national team and Gage I think has a more of a similar story to me than uh, Micah does but for me like with the national team I know that professionally here I have to prove myself I think uh, way more before I give I'm given a legit chance in the national team gym um, and I know that like at my entire life I have to earn every I've had to earn everything just like you guys have and so for me, like, I understand that. And um, that's been my mindset always. And, I, and I'm not going to let people tell me how, I, how they think my career should go. And so that's kind of my story. Um, I don't know if I answered everything there, Gage. I don't know if I, I can't I, remember I the have exact one question. question. Uh, before we get on the mic out, do they look – I mean, this is kind of, I guess, be a dumb question. But do they take into account how you're doing, like, professionally? Like, cause you, you consistently see the same guys in there, right? So let's say if, like, one American's popping off, off that was For off sure. the radar. Or one, For you sure. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Will you, will you like, will they definitely be, like, let's say if you're doing really, really well. Let's say, let's say be one guy does better than the other. Team, <laughs> right, right. But then d- when you get there, are you kind of, like, this one guy goes off, does he kind of 
brought up faster than another guy, or is it how does it kind of work with that, or does it, they have to work their way up again? Same thing. No, yeah. If you do well, just give them more attention. No, if you do well, you get you get a pretty fair shot at it, and then from there, it's like a it's like a new competition kind of. But you'd be in there like at the top with the top guys, and you'd be in there battling. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you were um, to like have an amazing season, for sure. For sure. So. Oh, okay. for me. Yeah. So all right, Micah, you're up. Go. Um. So I got in there. I think we've. I think also something to like touch on is that we've always been. Hey guys, I hope you guys are enjoying this clip of If You Can't Handle the Heat. I'm here to inform you guys that we have plenty more juicy information and storytelling on the full episode. Make sure you click the link below. We're both on Apple Music and Spotify. It's easy. Click the link below. Bam. A lot more information coming your way. Now, let's get back to the magic. Well, into, like up from youth until uh, the national team, like we've been in that kind of weird pipeline that does exist a little bit. Um and so we played USA from youth to junior. And then it's kind of, I feel like a little bit of a natural progression. Like you go from youth to junior um, to like the Pan American games, or you're like in there. If you do well in college, if you play, if you're one of the top 10 players in college, you get into that gym and you're kind of in there with the Pan Am team or kind of in that area. And then you're just kind of in the gym. It's just about just playing well. And I don't even know. But for me, I didn't do the Pan Am team, which I've gotten a lot of flack about. Um, I from who? Just from the guys in the gym, um, which is fine. But I didn't really have the opportunity to go. I got called in after my freshman year. Um, I think a bunch of us were in there. Um, but I, I actually don't think Sparaw calls it in. Uh, I'm not, like, trying to just say that because Sparaw is, like, obviously my, my coach at UCLA. But he doesn't pay enough attention. So at the time it was Seeley that I think that emailed me and was like, Hey, Michael, what's your schedule? When are you coming in? Um, like, I think I showed up and so I was like, Hey, and, and I was like, Hey, he's like, Oh, nice. You're here. Like, I think Seely or like Joe said with Rob, um, they do a lot of that stuff during the college season, like watching people and seeing who they should bring in. So I just want, I just freaking, um, what's, what's it called? I just worked the towel for my freshman, sophomore, and junior year. Um, three years of going in there every day. Freshman year, I would drive in there, even in the spring, I would drive down there. Um, first, I would w- wake up, work out with the UCLA team because they didn't want me to uh, not be a part of the team. The, spring during the season? Springtime, I was, because UCLA ends so late, a lot of the guys get there in um, April or May. I don't end school until June. So for about a month, I was driving down, I think during long, season, longer than a month. No, no, no. Our season ended right when our season oh, okay. ended, I got a okay. day off and I was already back in there. So okay. I think I was lifting with UCLA in the morning. I would go to class and then leave directly. This was gnarly. Leave directly to Anaheim. It would take me like an hour and a half to get there, practice with them, lift, and then go home and repeat but on my way home i'd be so tired i'd stop at the same gas station every day and sleep for like four hours and just like pass out and then just drive back at like 10 at night and be all right here we go you can ask my roommates swear um i did this like i think my sophomore year maybe it was my sophomore year too because i don't la traffic too yeah the la traffic i was like dude i'd rather sleep than stay three hours in this traffic to get um back home so I did that and I just, I didn't practice. I probably like actually played six on six for the first time, like more than two days in a summer, my junior year. So I just like cleaned up for everybody. Um, and With a then, smile on your face. Oh yeah, no, you should see, you should see the tape. I've gotten, I get awards for the greatest towel wiper. Dustin is really good too. Dustin's a legitimate um, contender. Towel wiper. And so is Kyle Ensing. <laughs> Uh, who we actually created a, a really strong bond by wiping the floors together um, every day. We, we'd bring our own towels. We'd have like three towels and try and clean up during the play. We took it to the next level. Cause during why not? the play. Oh, yeah. We'd, oh, we'd do mo- the most ridiculous stuff. Um, I'm sure there's some film on there. We should get it and put it up on Out of System, actually. I'm you have sure the film. We don't. We, ain't we, we can access it. I, uh, yeah, maybe I if I look back at the practices. Yeah. We could probably find something, 
Um, but yeah, I did that. And then my senior year, I just got a good shot at it. After my senior year, um, it was me, Josh. It was last year, I think. Kyle. Me, Josh, and uh, Kuvika were the, the three backups for Micah. And we all just split time. Um, we all set the same amount of matches in VNL. Uh, I think we all set three matches and they were just kind of trying to see who was going to win that battle. Um, and oddly enough, I also hit outside. Um, there were some shortages and I had done pretty well at outside and in the gym, I was hitting well. So, um, I think Sander got hurt. Langlois was hurt and I was on the trip and I was on the road. So I got some, I got some playing time. Some guys weren't playing very well. Um, so I got to go in there and hit, which I love. I do wonder if, like Joe, I should switch the hitter because I like hitting so much more. Um, I don't know if a... I'm selling out, but uh, I like hitting more, I'm pretty sure. pretty. When people ask me that, I never knew because they're both fun when you're playing well, but I'd rather we, be We can outside. find a pro team. Where we can get you engaged hitting on the outside. Find no. a pro team. A B league or something. If you get me on the outside, we're Dude, not in the best the, league. I, Gage, we could find. You could. We just gotta get some good middles. Okay.